Welcome to the second video in the All Things Aviation series. Originally in my introductory video I said that for my second video I was going to do one on how to get hired by the Guard and Reserve. I do still plan to do that, so if you're looking forward to that, be looking for that in the future. However, I've decided to do a short sort of mini-series, if you will, on navigation and the navigational instruments that we use. Uh, at a basic level in the aircraft, so it's just going to be at a basic level. I'm not going to get into anything super advanced. So I'm basically going to go ahead and start with the ADF uh, and NDB because I feel like that offers a strong foundation that we can use kind of as we go forward with some of the other nav aids. Um, so let's kind of just get into it. The NDB is the term that we use, non-directional beacon for the station that we're navigating off of. It's a ground-based station, so it's, a, it's physically located somewhere on the ground, and we use signals from that to navigate from. In the ADF, the Automatic Direction Finder, is the what we call the equipment we use to navigate off of an NDB. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. So let's just kind of jump into it. The NDB, let's just say it's located there and our aircraft can be somewhere to the south facing it. Now the ADF inside the aircraft is actually, it looks just like a compass and on the outside it has all the magnetic headings usually in five degree increments. For our purposes we'll just use the compass rows to kind of keep things simple but you can imagine it would have you know each five degree increment on the compass card. Now the compass card itself within the ADF is usually slaved to a compass. So it will actually move to maintain a true representation of your orientation. So if you're facing east, east would be at top. In this case, since we're facing north, this would correspond with our aircraft orientation. If our aircraft were actually facing to the east, It would look more. It would look like this: east there, west here, north, and south. So, in this case, we're facing east, so it would look like this: north will always face north, and at the top will always be your current heading. Also, within the bearing pointer, again, I'll just kind of set us up to the south, facing the or also within the ADF correction. I'll set us back uh, facing north towards the station. There is what's called a bearing pointer and this will always point at the station that you have tuned in. So in this case if we have this station tuned in it's going to point directly at it which is directly to the north. If the station were over here somewhere even though our, we're still facing north now the bearing pointer will point to the northeast where the station is. So it's really actually very simple. It's always going to point just directly at it. So to navigate with this, in the very most basic sense, you simply turn to put the bearing pointer at the top of the case, and then you fly to it. You just maintain the bearing pointer facing the very top, because that's going to be equal to the direction that you're going, and you fly there. And that works great in a no-wind situation. However, what we run into is with wind, it can really cause some problems. So, as you can imagine, since we fly through the air and there's a wind, it will push your ground track. So, forget about the station for a moment. Imagine that you're just facing on a 360 heading and you're trying to fly a 360 heading. So, this is where you want to go. But there's a strong wind from the west. Well, in reality, that's going to want to push us to the east. So we might actually have a ground track that looks a little more like that. And so you can imagine you can't just turn to this orientation and maintain north because as you continue out here, now your bearing pointer is going to look like this. And that doesn't really jive because we'll, we would never get there. We would continue to fly and the bearing pointer would continue to rotate around. Next thing we know, we'd be flying away from the station. So what ends up happening is pilots turn 
kind of slowly, and in the beginning levels of learning to fly, perhaps accidentally, to keep the coarse needle, or correction, the bearing pointer, in the top of the case, so that they're always going to the station. But then what happens is, as the wind pushes them around, they end up flying a track like this. Because as they get pushed around, they turn to keep the, the bearing pointer at the top of the case. And they're flying, but they're still getting pushed out, so they have to turn more and more and more and more. Until eventually they kind of come in from the side. And that's called homing. And we really can't fly that way. I mean, I guess you can in the, in the literal sense. You'll still get there. But it's inefficient, and it causes problems if you're on an IFR clearance, because air, air traffic control expects you to maintain a given ground track, essentially, uh, and they will assign that to you. So in this case, if they said proceed direct to the station, you're expected to go in a direct line from where you are to the station. And so in this case, if we were to turn direct to it, they expect us to take this ground track, and really our ground track looks like that. And so they might clear other aircraft into the airspace over here, and you can imagine that that causes a collision hazard. So we can't home. So what we found, or what we, what we can do, rather, to get there is uh, maintaining a ground track and only having a bearing pointer is we do uh, what's called a crab angle, which means we turn into the wind somewhat to offset the wind. So in this case, let's uh, pretend that we have winds coming out of the east. We again are directly to the south of the station and we want to fly an exact 360 ground track to the station. So what we would do is we would originally turn to put the bearing pointer at the top of the case because we want to go to the station. However, again, if we just maintained that, we would actually fly this, and we already talked about why we can't do that. So what we would actually have to do, and I'll exaggerate it to make the example easier to see, let's say, let's pretend it takes 45 degrees of crab angle to fly truly north. So you would turn your aircraft like that. That way, you would be going like this, but really with the wind, even though you're facing this way, you'll track directly north. So basically what you're going to do on your, or what your ADF is going to look like, your bearing pointer will still be pointing to the station, but the station will no longer be directly in front of you. This is what would, you know, this is where you're looking. And so it would actually be pointed like this. And north would still be up here south here. So in this case you might be at like a 045 heading. And so basically what we do when we want to navigate with a direct ground track to a station is we turn to put the bearing pointer at the top of the case and then we turn as necessary to maintain the bearing pointer at whatever the heading was that it was at when it was at the top of the case. So you initially turn to put it at the top of the case. In this case, it was 360. Then you make heading changes as necessary to maintain the bearing pointer pointing at 360. Now, let's talk really quickly about how to correct if you get off course. So in this case, let's say the station is here. We will be out here to the west but not exactly on a 090. Let's say we want to fly a 080. And our aircraft is here. So in this instance, our compass or our ADF would look like this. Assuming there's really no wind, or maybe very small wind, 
And let's pretend that we look down all of a sudden, and now it's pointing exactly at east, so it's pointing at a 0, 9, 0. So you can, as you can imagine, that's this line here. So that means we're to the left, of course. So to correct the back, you would have to go even further to a heading of like maybe 100 zero zero or 110 zero to correct back to get to this course, and then you would turn back to the left to re-intercept and fix that. So that's how you, if you're off, you have to continue to turn kind of into the way that you're off, if that makes any sense. Um, so if you want to be on a 080 and you look and it's on a 090, you have to turn into that more to the right get like to originally correct and then re-intercept the 080. So you would come back down until the bearing pointer was again pointing at 080, then you would turn left again to re-intercept that. So I hope this helps kind of clear up any questions you might have had about an ADF and NDB, how we use that to navigate. And like I said, this really lays a good foundation for you to use in other navigational equipment, which I'll cover in some of the future videos, particularly the VOR. Please comment and subscribe. Thank you.